going on guys? Ben. Um, so today's video, I'll be showing you guys a little something I did. Uh, actually right here, tire carrier for my Jeep. Um, I made it, I'll tell you why, how, and uh, you know some of the good things about it. But before we get into that, I want to go ahead and say, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do. I'd really appreciate it. We got a lot of cool videos coming out this year. Got a lot of different plans for the channel and everything. So make sure you subscribe and let's go ahead and dive right into this. All right, so I mean, as you can tell, tire carrier that's gonna go right into the receiver hitch. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, it looks freaking crazy. You guys are probably like, Ben, why is it up so high? Why is it tilted? Why, what's up with it? Well, the whole reason I did it like this is because the original one I made uh, sat kind of right where a normal tire would be. And of course it blocks a license plate. So, um, I guess jump back a few steps. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I did a spare tire delete. You know, if you've watched my other videos, I talked a lot of reasons why I like the spare tire deletes. Um, but I mean, just a real quick recap. I don't need to carry a spare tire all the time. Uh, you know, I don't like the weight. I uh, didn't really want to buy an expensive carrier. So I did the spare tire delete, love it. But there are certain times when I do want to have uh, up my, my, my spare long trips, wheeling trips, all that kind of things. Usually I just throw it in the back, but uh, either throw it in the back or throw it over there in the trailer on the trips. But, you know, now, since the kids are gonna start coming along on the wheeling trips, I really can't put the tire in the back. So I had to figure out a way to bring the tire, especially on trips when I'm not bringing the trailer. So I'm like, well, let's just build one of these. It's a uh, quick, easy, removable um, spare tire holder. So this is what it looks like. You know, I had to make it high enough so it doesn't block the license plate because you can't ride around with the license plate being blocked. Thought about making like a quick system to, you know, reattach it and everything, but that was way too much work. I'd much rather go with this. Simple, easy. But uh, let me go ahead and set up the GoPro, show you guys how this thing works, how it folds down, and then I'll kind of explain how I built it very briefly. All right, so uh, as it sits here, uh, I do want to go ahead and say it is naturally going to have some side to side movement. And that's just because where it sits in the actual trailer hitch, you're always going to have some movement. If you've ever had those cargo racks, there's movement. So uh, the actual design of this carrier has no movement, except a little bit on the pivoting bolt, but I'll talk a little bit about that later. But I mean, so you're going to have about three inches of swing in each direction, just because of the play inside the, the, the hitch. Uh, not a big deal though. But sits here out of the way, you know, pretty much good to go, except until we want to, you know, if we need to get inside our rear hatch, we're kind of screwed. So put a bolt up here and a pin down here. So to pivot it down, we're going to pull this little pin, pull the big pin, and then really muscle this down. I will say that this gets heavy. So I mean, like, so, a setup like this isn't good for, like, you know, really weak people or I don't want to be mean, but like, you know, if you're super small, weak, uh, it's kind of hard. But I mean, if you're a bigger guy, it's not too bad to push down. You just really got to notice that, you know, you're pushing a lot of weight around, trying to push this all the way down. Um, it will, has a stop right here, so it can't go too far forward. Not gonna be able to bust your window out, as well as coming down. I mean, you could just let this drop right now and it'll stop it before it hits all the way on the ground. So. Uh, yeah, put it down, you just lower it to the ground, boom, come over here, get whatever you need out, close it, and then throw it back up. Getting this thing back up uh, definitely requires more strength because, I mean, it's like you're doing like a deadlift to an overhead press to get it back up there and repin it, but it's not that bad. Um, you know, it's you don't want to be doing this every 10 minutes, but just to bring it on a trip where you might only need to get in here once or twice, it's not that bad. Let's go ahead and throw it back up. So, I mean, the initial, like, getting it up there, you don't have to do it like a snatch like that. You can do it slowly. But get it up, repin it, and then don't forget to put the little locking pin in and uh, get to go. So, I mean, that's the overall design of this. As you can tell, it's very simple, but uh, I should have left it down. I'm going to lower it down and then show you guys what materials I used, how to use it, or, like, the parts I used to make this in case you do have a welder. Um, you know, and you're 
you know you have some fabrication skills and want to make this for yourself so uh let's go ahead and look at that all right so taking a look into actually how i made this i used a two inch square tubing it's going to go inside our receiver hitch drilled a 5 8 hole inside the square tubing for our pin came out here all the way to out here used quarter inch plate on both sides Drill two holes in the quarter inch plate, put another piece of plate here, and this is what actually acts as our stop, uh, both forward and backwards. Um, prior to doing this, I had a forward stop back here, which I'll show you in a minute. But drilled the two holes. This top one is just simply a bolt, our pivot point, and down here is the pin, which uh, pull has this, and this is going to be our quick release. And as you can tell here, it uh, it was just a pin with the holes and I welded a D-ring little mount to it with the washer to use as a handle. We're gonna push this back up. Actually, I guess I could lower it down. Show you guys, put the pin out of the way. All right, so before I had designed this plate over here, I had put this little uh, spider web gusset on, welded that. Uh, I had to chop it off so it didn't make contact with the bumper. But hindsight, I wouldn't even use this now since the forward stop is going to be this plate as well as the downward stop. So this isn't even needed. Um, but yeah, I mean, oh, a stick of two inch square tubing, quarter inch plate, bolts, and then let me look at where the, uh, I'll show you guys how the tire actually attaches. But as you can tell, overall, it's a very simple design. Not too bad to do it on. So we're taking a look at how the tire attaches now. I have uh, the two inch square tubing cut at uh, I want to say like a 30 degree angle. I don't remember exactly. Welded it going to like a 15 degree angle. Welded to some flat stock quarter inch. Um, and this is where you could go a few different ways. Uh, I was a little pressed on time so I was going to use studs. Actual Jeep Wrangler studs so I could use lug nuts. But didn't have time to go get them so I just used some half inch bolts put them through welded them and then on the back side of this tire or the wheel I'm actually just using a washer and nut opposed to a lug nut it works perfectly fine uh, it's attached super strong but if you wanted to avoid using bolts you could just drill the holes press press the studs in or simply put the studs in and weld them up call it good but I mean as you can tell super simple design um, works for a lot of people uh, not too bad to make if you have fabrication skills if you don't um, there's no companies out there that I've seen that make these so uh, I was thinking I might start making them I don't know but we'll see all right so taking a quick look at the mounts up here where the tire sits or the wheel sits uh, these were the bolts I used and then just washers and nuts like I was talking about only did three that's really all you need um, and that holds it more than more than enough like i said earlier you could always use lug nuts here so uh lug nuts and studs just to give it a more finished look if, if that's what you're into all right so i mean that's basically it uh, as you can tell it's really not that too much work to do if you want to make one yourself uh, but a lot of people don't have welder don't have a welder laying around or the time or skill to make this uh, i thought about making these uh, this was just like a prototype um, but I mean, overall, I'm super impressed. It's probably something that I wouldn't actually take on the trail. Just more of something to, uh, you know, throw the spare tire and to get to the trail, uh, you know, whether in your hotel or camping, whatnot, and just take it off, throw it in there. Just, I mean, just because it has a little of that side to side movement, I'd really be afraid, like, dirt roads and stuff, you'd be fine. But when you start getting on rocks and get this thing swaying really hard, it just, I don't know. I just, I don't know if I'd really trust it. I'm going down to Uari this weekend with some uh, some buddies for the opening weekend. I'm gonna leave it on some of the trails and test it out and make sure it's super durable. And then if I don't have any problems down there, I mean, it should be fine to hit the trails with if that's something you wanna do. Um, but overall, I mean, there's nobody else making this. For me, it was kind of a no-brainer to make it. Um, very cheap, and it solves my issue of where I'm gonna keep my spare tire and still have the tire to leave. So, I mean, uh, if you guys have any feedback, throw it in the comments, you know, if you'd be interested in one. Uh, if you have any questions about certain designs I did, or like, you know, if you have a question on how to build it, throw it in the comments, I'll answer it, no big deal. But, uh, 
I'm, I'm extremely happy with it. I'll do some walk around shots real quick, show you the different angles. But overall, I mean, I think it looks good. Not really a fan of how high it sits, uh, but there's really no other way of doing that without blocking the license plate. And I don't want to get pulled over, get a little ticket for something stupid like that. But uh, yeah, really nothing else to it. Um, if I do decide to make more of these, like if you guys are like, oh, I want some, or you know, Instagram people are like, oh, I want some, then I'll probably do a step-by-step -step video tutorial, um, you know, talking about each step and how I do it in case you guys want to build one of these at home. But, I mean, it's super simple. So, I'm not going to drag this video out any longer. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, like I said, throw some uh, feedback in the comments. I appreciate it. Give the video a thumbs up if you will. And uh, be sure to subscribe if you haven't. And all you loyal subscribers, I really appreciate you guys. So, I'm going to go wheeling this weekend at Uari and finally get some uh, some good good footage. I know I say that every time I go wheeling and I just end up having fun never break out the camera. But I'm going to try to get a lot of good footage. I have a couple videos in the works. I'm going to try to get footage of down there. But, you know, time will tell. Weekend's supposed to look really good. Hopefully it's not busy. But being the opening weekend is probably going to be pretty, pretty busy. But uh, I'm going to get some good shots. Try to make a few videos while I'm down there. And then just, you know, once again, have some fun with friends. So... I'm going to stop talking. Bye.